Boxing Gyms, G-E-M-S, Boxing Gyms. Check it out, study some of those videos there. The guy's phenomenal. His name is Ryan, I'm telling you. All right, you'll pick up a lot of knowledge there. Fight fam, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification. Class in session. David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant. We're finally getting a highly anticipated matchup between two somewhat similarly experienced super middleweights. Let's get into it. Benavidez has a long, quick, and solid jab when he gets it going. However, he has the tendency to fall to the left into a cross step with his back leg. Fundamentally, this is not how you circle jab left. You do that by stepping left and releasing the jab simultaneously, then follow with your back foot. What Benavidez is doing is an issue in technical form and therefore balance. It takes longer for David to get off his front foot because his back leg is swinging instead of taking small steps. Caleb Plant's jab is more nuanced or what we would call a good lead hand. You'll see Plant probing, feinting the jab, and then jabbing far more often. Landing a jab is only one byproduct. With the lead hand, Plant controls distance, controls his opponent's punches, hesitates his opponents, forces openings, and then finally lands the jab. Plant has a better overall lead hand than anybody Benavidez has ever fought as a professional. Plant understands the value of controlling space with the lead hand as well as having a quick, accurate jab. Cutting off the ring should be more difficult for Benavidez and is multiplied by other issues we'll talk about later. Benavidez almost always defaults to an inactive high guard, which should be a significant factor in a fight. When Plant feints, probes, or initiates offense even with only a jab, he would likely force David into his high shields. The jab alone would likely help Plant control the action whether controlling the pace and spots by controlling distance with the lead hand and also David's guard. Also, the guard in the high shields means nothing is occupying or controlling the space between David and his opponents. When the high guard is forced up, his opponents typically step in with combinations. Caleb Plant actually excels at these type of situational combinations when his opponents are in the high guard. Plant also doubles and triples up lead or backhand punches which are effective against active or inactive high guards as they stray from typical combinations fighters trained to defend against. The other tendency Plant has against high guards is the backhand to the body. Caleb makes his high guard opponent shell up with his jab feints, which pulls the guard towards the center line to block. Then Plant changes levels, winging the fore or backhand hook around a tuck elbow to the exposed left floating rib.
Plant is one of the most mobile and slick fighters in boxing, so cutting off the ring was already going to be a task for Benavidez regardless. But a few of Benavidez's own tendencies toughen what would likely be his task in the upcoming bout. David's high guard also makes it more likely that Plant can step around him and switch to angles with a simple control hand or occupying punch. Whether Plant steps around or pivots to turn Benavidez into offense or just to gain real estate and step out of a disadvantageous ring position. David tends to step back foot first or he gathers his feet by overstepping with his back foot forward. Stepping back foot first to go forward is breaking from fundamentals. Some high level fighters use it to set traps. More specifically, slip counters or lead power with the back hand. However, the habitual use of back foot first once again leaves you resetting with your front foot towards your opponent. On the way to gather your feet with the long back foot half step, you're off balance. When you gather your feet, you're out of stance and vulnerable. When you're completing the step with the front foot, you're off balance in range with forward momentum. Once the front foot lands, your weight is distributed and your front foot heavy typically in range. Not to mention back foot first makes it impossible to cut the ring properly as you'll end up completely squared, which has its own issues. When David tries to cut off the ring to his right, when he's stepping back foot first, he ends up with the forward triangle step, which automatically makes him square to his opponent. Square typically means either your shoulders or feet are perpendicular to your opponent's bladed stance, which would look close to a capital T or number seven positioning wise from above. It's not always a bad position, which we'll talk about in a minute, but being squared mid-range or outside completely exposes his center line and typically forces him to utilize his high guard again. So with the almost constant high guard, back foot first footwork and square positioning, the stab jab has been a highly effective weapon against Benavidez. The squared high guard typically gives up the opening for the stab jab. The jab also works to break David's base or leave him stuck with a broken base and out of stance needing to reset because of his footwork. While David can set a trap with back foot first footwork to bait and counter a jab to the head by slipping and changing head slots, he can't move his body. He'll either have to eat it or drop his guard to block it, leaving openings to the head. Last but not least, while David is utilizing poor fundamental footwork and having issues cutting off the ring, he tends to reach from the positions he's in as a consequence, leaving countering opportunities for his opponents. Plant likes to take the same risk, leaping and reaching with punches. He has a tremendous amount of athleticism so the leaping jabs and lead hand hooks can be successful at times. But if unsuccessful, they put Plant in dangerous positions to be countered with his feet off the ground or just landing. Benavidez has punished opponents for leaping, lunging and reaching with hard crisp counters. Plant, who relies on a Philly shell and low lead hand, has been susceptible to lead hand low, backhand high combinations. He has issues turning the shoulder after catching or parrying lead hands in the closed stance. A staple of David's offense is the level change, then variating power punches, so he might find success.
Plant is one of the best Philly Shell practitioners in boxing today, but I'm not sure how much that's actually saying. The longer the fight goes, Plant has been known in the past to gas out and heavily rely on the defensive system. Plant has had issue in the past blocking the lead hand hook out the Philly Shell. Sometimes the backhand isn't high enough, sometimes the trajectory of the opponent's lead hand hook is just right. But if you're in a position to where your opponent has the wherewithal to change the trajectory, you should have probably have already disengaged or smothered and clinched if you really want to be like Floyd. Plant also tends to lead towards his back leg or over his center line while in the shell. Without that lead hand to control distance and the feet to evade, this is where David's length and technique of fighting with his feet square can give Plant all types of problems. Plant does jab out the position which has definitely already caused him issue in the past. But as soon as he stops jabbing and shells up, Caleb won't be able to lean far enough away from a squared fighter who's essentially in an inside position in a T or a 7. All Philly or Mayweather shell practitioners struggle with dealing with the backhand hook to the body. Essentially, it's a barely legal blow that refs let slide because of how bladed most Philly shell practitioners are positioned. But Caleb's lean especially exposes the target. Plant also tends to pull straight out after delivering offense. Another one of the ways David's height and length can come into play are these countering opportunities Plant provides by not angling out or clinching. In my opinion, the bottom line from Plant's issues with the Philly shell and leaning is the more Plant is stationary, the more likely Benavidez will have success. David is excellent at shortening up his punches and throwing quick, accurate combinations. If Plant is caught in bad positioning, he's going to have to utilize the clinch as much as possible. I believe Caleb Plant has the ability to outbox Benavidez. However, due to his issues, Benavidez may clip him at any point in the fight. If Plant can't control distance and therefore pace, Plant will likely touch the canvas. If Benavidez can't close distance and make Plant stationary, I expect Plant to win the majority of the rounds. Due to David's footwork issues, it's possible that we see Plant produce a knockdown, but it's harder for me to see the knockout. Depending on the odds, I might go Plant on points or Plant straight up, just in case, hedge with Benavidez by knockout. Anyway, let me know who you got in the comment section. Sportsbook link in the description if you want some smoke. Like, subscribe, and share to spread the knowledge. Join the Patreon channel for live film study and exclusive content. Links in the description. 
Peace.